Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to paint this adorable elf girl in watercolor as a celebration for World Watercolor Month. Keep watching! Hey guys, so welcome to World Watercolor Month. I am super excited to be able to demonstrate some water for you, watercolor for you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure this fountain pen illustration. It was done with a pigment based ink. I'm just going to secure this illustration to some chipboard. This was from a fluid watercolor pad. The pad is now, oh no, never mind. It was not from a fluid watercolor pad. Apparently it's like the back of a frame. I thought it was from a chipboard pad. You can also use um, like used up chipboard backings from sketchbooks and stuff to secure standalone watercolor illustrations. And we're just doing this with a little bit of blue, blue painter's tape folded over. And this was inked with a platinum carbon desk pen with pigment based ink, which is going to be waterproof. And you can find out more about those types of ink in my fountain pen playlist. So slightly off camera, I have my paints. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do an all over background wash. Now, usually I would use an eyedropper to fill the wells of my little daisy palette here. And you don't have to use a daisy palette when you're watercoloring, but I like using it. Um, and I can also mix, well, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I can also mix in the big, um, there's like a big well in the middle that I can use. And let's see, what color would make a good background maybe some a mauve mixed with purple so i'm going to activate those colors by adding some water let me see if pulling out there we go that'll help a little bit and i'll pull back in once we start getting into detail so i am activating these half pans by adding a little water to them and i'm sort of doing an unusual type of wash in that i'm already applying some of my shadows using the same wash color. And the paper I'm using is actually very, very thin. It's not even like a true watercolor paper. It is from a Maruman or a Holbein watercolor sketchbook. They both use the same type of paper. So um, I sort of alternate between whichever one is more affordable. If I'm going to Jerry's, I get the Maruman. If I'm ordering off a of Dick Blick, I get the Holbein. And you guys can see that sort of pre-toning my image gives it a bit more drama, helps establish the shadows and hopefully it will help tie the background and foreground together. Sort of make it look like she's inhabiting a space rather than was placed on top of even though this is just a simple bust shot. Not even a full bust, really more like a head. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a chance to dry. All right, guys, so this base tone has had a chance to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and begin mixing up a skin tone, again, drawing some clean water from my cup. And really, if you have the space, it's best to work with two cups of water, one for one that is always clean water and the other for rinsing out your brush. Um, unfortunately, I have space limitations right now, so it's not really um, an available resource. One thing I do want to do 
now that I'm looking at it, is I see that I actually didn't do shading on her eyes. So I'm going to grab paper towel, move some excess water, grab some of that background color, and work it into her eyes. There, that's going to look much better. And I also activated a couple of different browns. So I'm also going to mix the background color a little bit darker. And I'm just going to I'm actually going to dual brush this because I do want to blend some areas of this out. So I'm going to grab another brush. This one is not a synthetic. Get some water on that. And with thin watercolor papers like this, you do have to sort of work quickly and with a lighter hand, but it performs a lot better than many of the other cheap papers I've encountered. I say as I continue to add some purple here and there. That should be good. Then while that dries, we're going to go ahead and mix up sort of a mid-tone skin tone for her. So we're going to start with some yellow ochre. We're going to add in some Venetian red, which ought to give us kind of a tannish skin color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Van Dyke brown. And uh, for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with these color, yellow ochre is sort of a brownish yellow. Venetian red is a red brown. And Van Dyke brown is a darker red brown. So we've got that color mixed up. And I'll let this dry and be back. All right, so today is a nice dry day. So we can actually make our progress pretty quickly. As you guys can see, the paper is kind of buckling up a bit. Um, that is one of the reasons why we taped it down, but we didn't actually stretch it. This paper, it's just not necessarily worthwhile to stretch this paper um, because it is so thin and inexpensive. So, um, you know, buckling is sort of going to be an issue. And I do have not only buckling tutorial or rather stretching tutorials here on my channel, but I also have quite a few um, uh, useful tips, tricks, and demonstrations on stretching over on the blog. And if you are interested in learning how to watercolor, it is an invaluable free resource, um, especially if you're interested in watercolor for illustrative purposes or for, say, your comic. So with thin paper like this, it really can't handle too much water. So even if we put down a lot of water, we're going to have to be careful to clean it up again. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Let me finish applying. But you can sort of go over the areas you've already covered and absorb some of the extra water with your brush. So, in case you are not familiar with this trick, to make your brush thirsty and absorb this extra paint, you take a paper towel, you dab out the extra water, and then your brush will soak up your extra paint even better than a paper towel can. And um, it's not going to leave sort of like divots or um, pick up areas in your paint. All right, so that is our first layer of skin tone. And we're going to go ahead and activate our red, get a nice thick mixture. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna go ahead and begin 
applying it to the cheeks and under John, and on her lips. Then, making the brush thirsty, dab up some of that extra water. And you see where there was a crease in the paper, the paint started to move. So, we can either let that be, because it's probably gonna dry very light and unnoticeable, or we can kind of correct it by making the brush thirsty and just sort of dabbing it up. So we're going to let that dry. So while the watercolor hasn't dried fully, it's still very cool and damp to the touch. I did want to point out that the way we just ap applied red to her skin gives it sort of a diffused and dreamy look. Yes, you can blend it out, but this is a little more um, randomized and you may find it um, a more appealing look. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and use a pre-mixed shadow color and it's really just like indigo with some purple in it and i'm going to do the shadow on her eyes i know that looks a little dark i'm also going to do a shadow on the gem she's wearing just kind of for consistency sake And a little bit of shadow here on the gems. So I'm going to create a thirsty but clean brush. So I rinsed it out and I wiped it off on a paper towel and I'm just going to pick up some of this excess color, blend it a little bit better. There we go. That way it doesn't dry too, too dark. Like that already. I'm also gonna go back into my shadow color Pick up a little bit more and apply it here on the big hair jewels while they're still wet so that'll sort of diffuse out all right and then i'm gonna let that dry as well all right so this has had a chance to dry i'm gonna go in now and do another layer of watercolor on the skin and when you see me touch um, hmm, this is not as dark as I would like. I think what I'm going to do, leave the ear as it is for now, let that dry. I'm going to go ahead and darken the color and then come back. But when you see me touch the paper like that, um, I'm feeling for a couple of things. If the paper is damp, then obviously um, it may not be an ideal time to do another layer um, because it may blend uncontrollably. Secondly, if the paper is cool, that means it hasn't dried entirely. You can often fill in adjacent layers or adjacent areas that at that time period, but it may not be the best time to may not be the best time to um, do blending or anything else that might disrupt the layer surface a lot. So I'm going to actually go in while I let the skin dry, and I'm going to. Paint another layer on her lips. Get rid of some of that red. It's a little bit much. Not that the color is a bit much. Uh, it's just a bit, bit much on the brush. All right. Then we're going to use that same technique we used earlier to sort of pick up excess and sort of shape the lips. Go. And go in and do the same sort of thing for her cheeks, except I'm going to leave a little more water on the brush when blending out. All right, and we're going to let that dry. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and start doing her eyes. And I have a tendency to really prefer to do um, 
like olive green to an intense blue. But I think I'm actually gonna do a blue to purple today. I really enjoy doing sort of fantasy colors and considering she's an elf, a fantasy color should not be a problem. So I'm gonna use a mix of cerulean and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to just simply fill in the majority of her eye. Do so with the other one. And I'm gonna try to move the bulk of the pigment towards the tops of the eyes. Darken it a bit. And then I actually need to allow it to dry a little bit. It is a little too wet considering the paper quality. Um, but once it has dried a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some purple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add, make sure there's lots of water on my purple. And I also want um, very contrast, contrasty uh, colors on the gems. So I'm gonna start by activating Indian yellow and red orange, like cadmium orange, and then scarlet lake. Well, that might be too contrasty. We'll find out. Go ahead now, pick up some of that purple. And I'm going to start dabbing it in at the tops of her eyes. It's still a little wet for what I want to do. Clean that out. Pick up some cherry red. And even though I'm gonna do another layer over this. Darken the lips. And while I wait for that to dry, I'll do my first layer of Indian yellow, which shades um, from a very light, bright yellow to an orange, so you can get a lot of use out of this color. And I'm gonna leave just a little edge of white, same as I did with her eyes. I really help make the color seem to pop. Okay, and we're gonna let this dry. All right, so if I am very delicate. Okay, that is still wet enough where if I add too much, it will move. But I think actually the skin is ready for a second layer. And we went ahead and mixed that skin tone darker. So it's a little more noticeable now that we're adding a second layer. That was my concern. Um, you can really lose contrast if you don't mix your next color dark enough. And sometimes with these darker skin tones, um, so with Caucasian skin tones, sometimes you can get away with doing like six layers of basically the same mix. Um, but with darker skin tones, sometimes the difference isn't noticeable enough and noticeable enough and it starts looking really muddy. Um, so you need to mix it a little bit darker. And the muddiness just comes from a lack of um, building up enough contrast. So. We're going to blend that out a little bit. And 
we're going to, let's see, because the light is coming from this side of the face. So we want to maybe go in like this and then darken her lips. Leave a little bit of highlight there. It's not super noticeable, but it will sort of add up as well. We're going to blend this. Just give me a second. And I'm actually going to cut the skin tone a bit short and that way it'll sort of fade off into the background. Okay, next I'm going to take a thirsty brush and start handling some of those blends. There we go. That's one. On cheap papers like this, a thirsty brush is really a better way to handle blending your colors than a brush full of water because paper like this just can't handle a whole lot. Okay, so we need to let this dry. All right, guys, so today is fortunately a pretty dry day and that means my watercolors are thankfully drying pretty quickly. So I can opt to do another layer or I can start working on something else. Now something I wanna go ahead and start establishing is I wanna do her hair color. And we were talking about fantasy colors, but I actually think I want to do her hair as black. One of, uh, a few of my friends have actually um, made the state, you know, been, have been talking about how there aren't enough characters of color and people of color. So certainly, I want to try and um, add more to that number. But keep in mind that it's also really important to support creators of color. So um, if you would like to see more work featuring characters of dif different ethnicities, then you need to support creators of those ethnicities and other ethnicities um, in creating those characters. So while I let the black uh, paint and also uh, Payne's gray sort of um, activate and uh, tighten up background a little bit. Then I'm going to go in and add some more purple to her eyes since this is finally dried. First thing, I'm probably not going to be able to blend this because sometimes uh, cerulean blue um, gets muddy and weird for me. And I'm using Winsor & Newton cerulean blue. So if you have a suggestion for one that isn't, it, it doesn't get muddy or opaque, then I would be interested in hearing that. Also, oh, try not to rest my hand in wet paint, but I'm also going to add some purple. All right. To let that dry. And pull out, and I'll start mixing up that hair color. And I want to start light. Um, so I want it to be more gray because that's going to give us our highlights. So I need to allow what I've done on the background to dry, and then I'll go in and do her hair. All right, it looks like our back ground color has had a chance to dry. So I'm going to have to be really careful applying this because I do have wet paint. So I can't rest my hand on the surface, but we have a really nice light gray that's going to work really well for the highlights for the most part. I'm going to leave some white highlights, um, but I want I like having like a variety 
of tones when I paint. And like I often say in my painting tutorials, it's better to start lighter and leave yourself room for contrast. So I'm gonna leave the very edge of her hair white, sort of rocking this 90s anime aesthetic, very shoujo aesthetic. And I actually have a little too much water on my brush because it wants to sort of go out of the line. So if you're having control problems, and I know that's something a lot of people have told me they have issues with. That can be one of the reasons. I'm actually leaving a white area here because the eye is still wet. And um, so areas of high water, so me adding a bunch of water to this illustration, it's going to cause a bloom in her eye and that's gonna look, it could look good, but it's going to look strange if I do it in this instance. So leaving that white area there. Leaving a white outline on her hair. I'm going to do the same with this eye here. Sometimes it's better to err on the side of caution. However, the only way you can learn these sort of things is by making mistakes and learning from them. So while I point this out, don't feel bad if you, if you slip, if you make a mistake, if you misjudge a situation. I still do that plenty, but I'm always learning. And you're always learning, so long as you try new things. I may, I like how the gray looks with her darker skin. What I may do is I may develop her skin a lot more and then leave her hair sort of a, either a light gray or a dark gray. It's an option. Um, or I could leave her skin a little lighter brown like this and um, paint her hair very black. Okay, and I also filled in the transparent part of her hair jewels. And of course, we have to let this dry before we can progress. All right, so it looks like this has all had a chance to dry. So I'm gonna go in again with her skin tone. I may end up needing to darken it again. It's nice to start somewhere kind of, um, kind of non-obvious, like over here on the ear. That way you can judge whether or not your color is dark enough. So I actually think I need more Van Dyke Brown. And I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of sepia. You don't wanna darken it too much and you don't want it to kind of look unbelievable. And actually now would be a really good stage to just go ahead and add whatever shading we're gonna add to her face. So I'm gonna let her ear dry, but I'm going to mix some more purple in with the background color, get it a little darker, as well as some Payne's gray, and that'll sort of neutralize how hot that purple is. So we'll let this dry, and then we'll go and add shadow color to her face. Okay, so our little ear test has had a chance to dry. Now we can go in and do the shadow colors on her skin, which I think will work really well. Sometimes it's really better with darker skin tones like this one here to do your shadow colors early on and then paint on top of them because they tend to be mixed a little less saturated than say um, what we're gonna end up doing with some of our skin tones. So um, that could disrupt layers that are thickly applied. So it's really best to apply it sort of in the middle of when you're rendering skin. And then you can adjust it as necessary and blend it out without it disrupting. And I'm going to blend some of this out and some of it I will not blend out. So. 
blend some of this up here out, soften it a bit. Add some additional color. Definitely blend out and lift even some of the nose. There we go. All right. And I'm going to add a bit more here and there. All right, looking pretty good. I want to lift also this up here because a little too much went down. There we go. Awesome. All right, gonna let that dry. All right, so while that dries, we can work on darkening her hair. So we're gonna use a mixture of Payne's Gray and Black. You can also add um, a little sepia or even purple if you want. Usually I don't like using straight black. Um, carbon black and lamp black are decent blacks that do have some color to them, but black often reflects or contains a multitude of colors. So it's nice to be able to, I'm trying to be kind of careful here and figure out my boundaries. Um, it's nice to be able to reflect that in your watercolors. You can also put down a light layer like this and then dab in other colors if you wish. In fact, that will be probably an excellent idea once I have a little more of this down. And that needs to be done in stages if you're going to do that. And you also need to decide sort of ahead of time what colors you're gonna want to dab in so you can have those activated and ready because this is the sort of thing that needs to be done quickly. So what we're gonna do is pretty much all of the contiguous areas. You're gonna apply watercolor. It's also, if I had some salt handy, we are literally out of salt. Um, not, in, not in my personal life, but in real life, I'm out of salt completely. No kosher, no sea salt, nothing. Anyway, uh, you can also dab salt in if you want, but we're gonna go ahead and actually, do a mixture of purple and Payne's Gray and just sort of work that in here and there. Give her hair some interesting dimension. And this is gonna, for the most part, get painted over, but it's gonna add, I think, some really nice interest and it pretty much only goes where the paper is wet. That's why you want to work in batch because like cheap paper like this doesn't hold water for very long before it dries. See, every time I do one of these tutorials or demonstrations, I try to add in a new technique that we haven't really played around with. But sometimes I don't even decide on the technique until like the thought seizes me and I'm like, sure, why not? So I'm gonna wanna soak up that extra water because it's going to affect how well this blends. And note, I am covering less in this round than I did in the last. And in my other watercolor tutorials, we talk about how we're doing that to help build up contrast. All right, I'm gonna have to mix a little more of that Payne's Gray and Violet, and it doesn't have to be the same, exact same color. Now, if we were using an even nicer paper, 
we would get even cooler blend effects than we are getting right now. These are not great blend effects, but that's okay because I'm going to probably do a layer of black on top of it and it'll sort of all come together after that. But I have a feeling this is going to have a really long dry time because we've just added a lot of water and a lot of paint to the paper surface. And if there's some areas that are wet that you want to sort of go back into, now would be the time to do it. All right, I'm going to let that dry. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to work on her skin next. I'll start here under the neck, and this is actually a really good shade. And while this is still damp, I'm going to go ahead and blend it out a little bit. Blend this out as well. And then finally her ear. And then while that dries, I'm going to go in on her hair jewels and I'm going to, sorry, cat is forcing his way onto my lap. I can't sit down these days without this cat. I'm going to go into the hair jewels and add another layer of black. There we go. And then I'm going to let this dry. All right, so while that continues to dry, I'm going to mix up some red, maybe a little naphthol red, and start working again on her lips. All right, guys, so next up, I'm going to start working a little more on those jewels. So I'm going back in with Indian yellow and now might be a good time for a water change since we're dealing with lighter colors. And I'm going to use a thirsty brush to lift up some of that excess on the top jewel. Then I'm going to reactivate my orange. Make sure I get lots of pigment. Sorry about that. And add the orange in so that it blends. All right, and then I'm gonna use a little bit, just a little bit of scarlet. And tap that in as well. And then I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. We can do a couple of things. I did do some touch-ups on her little hair dongles but nothing too major. I just didn't like the muddiness of the color, so I sort of lifted that up. Um, we can do a couple of things. We can darken her, or continue working on her lip color. So cherry red and naphthol red. And always cover less than you did before. And then I custom mixed a black with purple that I'm going to use to do the final layer of her hair. And I really like that cool mottled purple effect. That's why I mixed the black with the purple. 
So I'm going to try not to cover too much of it up. And it will dry dark, but hopefully not too dark. Some people um, do enjoy sort of the graphic look that you can get with like a flat matte black with watercolor. Um, I've definitely seen some really well done examples of that, but that's not what I'm going for. Sort, sort of want a chromatic black. That makes sense. Black with some depth. Which is why this isn't actually a straight black. It is black with purple in it. And I'm gonna rotate this. That's what doing it on math board. It makes it so much easier than doing it, taping it directly to my craft mat can't really rotate the craft mat too easily while recording. And we'll go ahead and we'll paint the other sign. Try to make sure that I'm on camera. And then we have to be careful over here because the paper has buckled a little bit. All right, that's looking good. Okay, so I'm going to allow that to dry. All right, guys, so the hair has had a chance to dry. I think you guys can better see maybe what I had in mind. I'm gonna make a couple of really minor corrections, darken it up a little bit in a couple of areas. Maybe turn off the sound on my computer. Hope those of you who maybe feel intimidated by watercolor after watching this video feel empowered. It really, okay, we're gonna do the eyebrows. It really doesn't have to be too hard. It's also much easier to do if you're not talking the whole time. Try to keep it out of the eye, but darken those eyebrows a bit. We've done a good job. Go ahead, reactivate orange and scarlet. Gonna need those in a minute. Using a smaller brush. And so far, I think we've only used four brushes. None of them are particularly expensive brushes either. You can use expensive brushes if you want, but I have found that if you're having problems with your watercolor and you're using synthetics, it may be that your synthetics are too soft and they're scratching away the pigments from your paper. So having a few nicer soft brushes can be a really good decision. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some purple. And we're gonna start here at the bottom of our iris. And then once that dries, we're gonna go in underneath the eye line. I'm actually gonna grab another brush. You don't need another brush, so don't worry. If you don't have another brush, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna pick up some of that ultramarine mixed with cerulean blue. Then, while I wait for that to dry, I'll pick up some of her skin color and add it to her neck. And I'm using too small a brush for this, if we're being honest. You want to use as large a brush as you feel comfortable handling. Otherwise, it will look kind of scratchy and muddy. You don't want that. Grab that purple again, go up here, add some 
into the top of her eye to create sort of a shadow. To using cherry red with some naphthol red. Keep working on the lips. And then we're going to use a soft brush this time. So, squirrel hair, if you've got one, and those tend to be very inexpensive brushes, we are going to basically float some red orange. Saturated dot of scarlet. There we go. I think I'm going to go back into her eyes with some clean water. I'm going to blend this out just a little bit. There we go. It's looking better. There, it went on a little darker than I really wanted it to. All right. So in a few minutes after everything dries, I'm going to show you guys another trick. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, add a little bit of water to my shadow color, and I'm going to go in and darken up some of these areas at a little more contrast and shadow. I may have to go darker. Going to give that a chance to dry. All right, so while that dries, I think I actually want to do another layer on the lips, but I want to work more on building up the upper lip. So I've got a fair amount of cherry red. and I just work it up to that upper lip line. Then I'm going to use a thirsty brush to sort of just blend that color out a bit. I think that'll work well. All right guys, so we are nearing the end of this watercolor tutorial. Uh, there's a few things I'm gonna tighten up, a few things I'm going to do, but for the most part, we are just about finished. I hope this tutorial has gotten you guys excited about World Watercolor Month, and I hope it'll encourage you to, to do your own painting, to explore watercolors on your own. They can be a wonderful medium, and they don't need to be intimidating. You can start in whatever way you're comfortable, and there are plenty of easy ways to get started with watercolor. going in, reinforcing a couple of lost details here and there. And while those dry, I will pull out my white gouache. Well, I will find my white gouache and then I will pull it out and then I will use it. So I will be right back. Alrighty, I found the gouache and I went ahead and applied a dab off camera onto my painting palette and you need just a little bit of water. Gouache is a fairly thickly applied opaque watercolor for those of you who have never used it before. And I use it to add in highlights sometimes. And for traditional watercolor, gouache is, I mean, using gouache for highlights is kind of seen as a bit of a failure and that you should have left the paper white there. But when you're doing watercolor for illustration, there's really not any such compunction and you can use whatever media 
help you accomplish the job. Of course though, if you went to all the trouble of leaving your highlights and reserving your highlights from the get-go, there's really no point in kind of covering up your hard work with gouache. This is only if you would like to add additional white details to your work. And if you like my art, there's a number of ways you can acquire some for yourself. I am available for commissions, so you can email me for a quote, or you can find me at a con and check out my commission example book and select a commission that is right for your needs. Um, I also sell my original illustrations. Um, and if there is one you've seen that you're interested in, you're not sure about, you can also email me about that. I am revamping my shop, but I'm actually going to take my originals over to Etsy since there seems like there's a little bit more of an existing market for that there. And of course, you can always check out my comic, Seven Inch Kara, available as a web comic, at least the first two chapters are, or as a print comic, the first four chapters and a bonus story. And you can check the web comic out at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. And you can find a link to the Kara web comic in my description below. It is actually a watercolor web comic. I know, a little bit crazy. Um, so that is well in keeping with World Watercolor Month. So I think. We are just about done other than allowing our white gouache to dry. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I've inspired you to give painting a shot if I haven't done so already. If you're looking for more fantastic watercolor tutorials, there are two places you can find them. One, you can find them here in my watercolor playlist, or you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and enjoy my watercolor basics series where I teach you how to watercolor step by step. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.